Let's see, for my first day of classes, I have Advanced War Tactics, Intro to Welsh. Oh, but uh, first up is Geography. All right. But first, which house do I join? Hmm. I mean, I gotta go with the Black Eagles. Nobles, Edelgard, easy. What the heck was that about? Okay, well, that's a pass on the Black Eagles. Maybe the Blue Lions? I ain't got no problem, but you sure will if you don't beat it. You're still probably wet behind the ears from pre-dual school. What the heck is a dual school? Man, what is wrong with this place? God, could this day get any worse? Uh-oh. Hey, just a heads up before we start the video, there are going to be spoilers for Fire Emblem Three Houses. Alright, let's get back to it. Hello, and welcome to another video of me trying to make the fictional world a little more real. Today, we're going to look at the coolest school around. No, seriously. This is a stone fortress built all the way up on a mountain summit with a very open floor plan, and no HVAC. Winters here must be maddening. Probably a lot of snogging with your favorite magic user up here. Regardless of its inhospitality, Garrig Mach has stood for a very long time, until it didn't anymore. But 17 year old rebels aside, Garrig Mach was always going to fall. He said the title. <clears throat> Excuse me, talking, thank you. And this time around, it would probably take a lot more time to rebuild. So the main threat I'm referring to here is earthquakes. And to see why that is though, let's take a closer look at Garrig Mach. From the time you start the game, Garrig Mach has been around for 995 years, being built around the year 185, with the game starting in the year 1180. Originally, it was just meant as a monastery and headquarters for the church, but it soon became an officer's academy to help combat invasions from outsiders. This was, in part, helped by its central location to everything else. It sits here atop the Ugma? Agma? I'm gonna call him Ugma, but I'm probably wrong. Mountain range. What we know about this specific range is limited at best, but from walking around in various cutscenes we can at least know it's high up with a few um... <laughs> steep drop-offs. So let's talk about why I think this area is in danger of an earthquake. As some of you might know, many mountain ranges are caused by what's known as fault lines. Basically, they're the points where Earth's puzzle pieces, also known as tectonic plates, move and shift, either running away, alongside, or right into each other. This last one is actually how the famous Himalayan mountains were made, along with Mount Everest. However, not every mountain range lies on a fault line. Just take a look at this picture of major fault lines and you'll see that the Rocky Mountains in North America and any mountain in Australia very clearly do not fall on a fault. So why do I think that Ugma mountain range is on a fault line? Well, it all comes down to one very specific mission in the game that sounds very much like a bad TV drama. The Paralogue Rumold Nupitols. Nup Nupitol. Nupit. Rumored nipples. Ingrid is in danger of marriage. She has a marriage proposal from a very shady merchant man. In order to find out more about him before she accepts, we go along with her to investigate. Let's -a go! Fast forward, and we're headed back from this investigation to the monastery through a volcanic field. I have to believe this isn't the only route. And the dude freaking sends bandits to kidnap Ingrid and kill us. Yikes, talk about not taking the hint. What I want to focus on here isn't the criminal activity, but the location. This volcanic field, which I'm going to refer to as just a volcano since magma rising to the surface is almost always, if not always, related to a volcano, is called Aelio the Valley of Torment. Again with words in this episode. And it's found right along the Ogma mountain range. Right, so why does this matter? Well, volcanoes form in a few ways, but the majority are caused by none other than the movement of tectonic plates. While they can be formed by plates moving away, known as divergent, the one I'm going to focus on is known as convergent. 
You see, when these plates come together, one essentially gets pulled underneath. This plate is then melted into magma, which can cause it to eventually rise back up to the surface and be spouted out as lava. To show this, take a look at all the volcanoes in the world overlaid with a map of plate tectonics. Almost all of them lie along a fault line. Again, like with mountain ranges, not all of them do, but having the two together makes a fairly strong case that there's a probably converging fault line hidden underneath Garrig Mach. Man, this place seems to have a penchant for threats hidden right under its nose. To see how dangerous of a threat we're talking here, some real life examples of converging plate earthquakes include the Gujarat quake in India in 2001 and the Tohoku Japan earthquake in 2011. These were recorded at a magnitude 7.7 .7 and 9 respectively. Both terrifyingly strong, with many killed as a result. They also brought huge tsunamis which added to this death count, but since those don't threaten a monastery on a mountain, we won't talk about that aspect of earthquakes here. Instead, let's speculate about what kind of damage Garrig Mach could be in. Right off the bat, one of the main concerns is all the roads leading up to it. Damage to those could mean a large delay in supplies being brought up to the people inhabiting it. Damage to this bridge connecting the cathedral to the rest of the monastery is also likely, as well as for the towers. Heck, any elevated building is going to be in danger. Like, say, the audience chamber where the archbishop is. And let's not forget that it is built into a cliffside here, so anything that breaks off or falls is likely to be gone for a good while. Heck, that's not even talking about the abyss! Everyone down there is in trouble of taking double damage from the earthquake. No, wait, wrong franchise. Steering away from just the physical issues, remember that the fastest form of communication in this game is a horse. So word of what happened to Garrig Mach would likely spread before any word of the status of its inhabitants. Meaning the parents of those soon-to-be world leaders will be stressing out waiting to hear how they are. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry, Dimitri. You know, maybe we ought to be thanking Edelgard. She did force the monastery to evacuate, potentially saving everybody from a very deadly earthquake by starting a very deadly war. But, you know, maybe she isn't so bad after all. This is not as I planned, but there's nothing to be done. Burn the central hill. Yo, uh, hold on. Did she just sacrifice Bernie? Yeah, okay, never mind. She's evil. Hey, thanks for watching that video. And if you made it to this part of the video, thank you as well. That's very cool of you. You deserve a cookie. I, I'm, I'm not going to get you one, but you deserve one. As always, I had a lot of fun putting this video together. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below, and I hope to catch you guys in the next one.